All right, so welcome to the second part of this review. This is the challenging portion. So I'm going to write it in purple. I know it doesn't really match. The one that I put is like a maroon, but close enough. Okay. Is this electron configuration possible? Why or why not? Let's look at it. 1s2. Seems good. 2s2. Seems good. 2p7. Mm, that doesn't really sound right. I've never heard of 2p7. So I'm going to say that this is not possible because my p orbital can only hold p orbital hold up to six electrons. I can never have more than six electrons for any p orbital. Next, is this electron configuration possible? Let's see. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s3. Well, that doesn't sound right. I have never heard of an s orbital having more than two electrons. So I'm going to say it's not possible because s orbital hold, oh, hold up to two electrons, not three. Never, ever, ever. Next. Is it possible? Let's see. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Yeah, that sounds pretty right. I'm going to say it is because it follows electron limit for the orbitals that are mentioned. So my s orbital only had up to two electrons. My p orbital only had up to six. So yeah, that, that's good. Number 40. Is this electron configuration possible? All right, next, last time. 1s2, 2s3, hmm, well again, I don't like that, 2s3, that's not possible. Why? Because, same reason here, my s orbital can only hold up to two electrons, and that says three, so that's wrong. All right, next. What is increasing, the number of valence electrons or energy levels? In this picture, we are going across a period in the periodic table. So I know that if I move across the periodic table, my valence electrons are gonna be increasing. Because if I look at my periodic table and I remember, I know that this row has one valence electron, two valence electrons, three valence electrons, four valence electrons, five, six, seven, and then eight. So if I am looking this way, I know that valence electrons are increasing from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So valence electrons are increasing there. What is increasing when you go down a group? The valence electrons or the energy level? Well, energy level, and this one is pretty easy. Energy levels are the same as my period numbers. So if I am going down the group, I am going through row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I am increasing in the number of rows, increasing in the number of periods, so I am increasing the energy level. The more and more you go down, the higher the energy level is. Great. If reaction A results in a large explosion, it goes boom. And reaction B results in a small little pop goes which reaction was more reactive so I know that the word reactive means willing to react with something so if something explodes that's really really reactive if something goes boop, it's not as reactive still reacted a little bit not a lot so I'm gonna say that reaction a was my most reactive Okay, next. Carbon has three stable isotopes. We know what isotopes are already because we looked at it. Same number of protons, different number of neutrons. Carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. Which isotope is more abundant in nature? Abundant also meaning common. And how do I know? 
Well, to answer these types of questions, I can always know which one is more abundant in nature by looking at the periodic table. I see that carbon has an atomic mass of 12.011. So 12.011 is really, really close to the whole number 12. So I know that the most common isotope in nature is probably carbon 12. And I know this because my atomic number is really, really close to the whole number 12. You can do this for any element on the periodic table. So for example, beryllium has an atomic mass of 9.012. And 9.012 is really, really close to nine. So the most common isotope of beryllium in nature is beryllium-9. All right, next question. We're going to move sideways this time. What does sulfur have to do to have a happy octet and why? Well, first of all, I know that an octet means when an atom has eight balance electrons. All, all atoms want to have a full energy level, and that means having eight valence electrons in their outer shell, in their outer energy level. And that's for most atoms. There's some that only have one energy level, um, like hydrogen, that are happy with um, two. Okay, so first I need to find sulfur. Sulfur is right here. What do I have to do to sulfur? to get it to have a happy octet, so eight valence electrons. Right now, I know that sulfur has six valence electrons because it is in group 6A. So I have six valence electrons. I need to get to eight valence electrons. What do I do? Well, I need to gain two electrons. If I gain two electrons, I gain one electron, two electrons, and I am in a happy, happy octet. Why do I do that? Because elements love to have full energy levels. All of my noble gases have full energy levels. So they all, helium has uh, one level, so it has two electrons and it's happy. But all of the rest, their outer shell, has eight balanced electrons. Eight, eight, eight. It is the happy octet, the octet rule. You always have to mention it when you're talking about what atoms want to do to be happy. Okay, number 46. How do I find the atomic mass of carbon given I have these blobs? And these blobs, I drew them, they represent carbon atoms, or carbon isotopes, if you look closely. So I know that my atomic mass is typically going to be a decimal because it is an average. It is an average. So first, let me find the percentage of each one. I know that I have carbon 12, and I know that I have carbon 13. I have two types, carbon 12, 12, 12, 13, 12, 12, 12, 13, 12, 12. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have 10 total atoms. Out of those 10 total atoms, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight that are carbon 12. That means that I have two left over that are carbon 13. One, two. So with this fraction, I am going to find the percentage. So eight out of 10 is the same thing as 80% and 2 out of 10 is the same thing as 20%. I need to convert these percentages to decimals. So I'm going to move to the left, to the left, like Beyonce, and draw Beyonce's butt. So this is going to be 0 0.80 and this is going to be to the left, to the left. 0.20. Now, I have the percent of each of these carbons in my little whatever blob world this is. So I'm going to take my decimal of carbon 12 
and I am going to multiply it by the mass number. And then I'm going to take my decimal for carbon 13, and I am going to multiply it by the mass of that atom, 13. So I have found the percentage of each one. I've turned that percentage into a decimal, and now I'm going to multiply that by each mass. So I know that 80% of the atoms were carbon 12, so 0.8 times 12. 20% of the atoms were carbon 13, so 0.20 times 13. So let me get my handy dandy calculator here. My mom texted me if you saw that. <laughs> and you got 0.8 times 12. And that is equal to 9.6. And then you got 0.20 times 13. And that is equal to 2.6. And to finally find the atomic mass of this thing, so the average mass of this thing, I'm going to add these two numbers. So I'm going to add 9.6 plus 2.6, and that is going to give me 12.2. AMU, you have to include the unit. All right, and last but not least, number 47 for the challenging portion. Write the noble gas configuration, so I'm gonna use my noble gases, the easy shortcut good, for bromine. So I'm gonna get out my periodic table, and I need to find bromine. So bromine is right over here. So I need to find the noble gas that is above my element that I'm trying to find and across, that's argon. I need to put this element in brackets. Always, always, always put the element in brackets. From there, I can just read it as I would normally. So I'm gonna go across over here, 4s1, 4s2. So I need to write 4s2, 3d10, 3d10, 4p1, 4p2, 4p3, 4p4, 4p5, 4p5. And that is the electron configuration, or the noble gas configuration of bromine. So now we're going to move on to the hardest part of this review, the most challenging. And for the most challenging, I'm going to use the color red because that's the color that it was on the review. It's only three questions. So number 48, chromium X. How many protons does chromium have? I know that these are isotope notations. It even has the title right here as isotopes. So I know that all my isotopes have the same number of protons. No matter what the isotope is, I'm always going to have the same number of protons. So I just have to find chromium in my periodic table. Boom, there it is. And I know that my atomic number is the same as the number of protons. So my atomic number is 24. I have 24 protons. That wasn't that bad. Next. How many electrons does chromium X have? Ooh, okay, well I know that these are only isotopes. There's no ions here. There's no positives, there's no negatives, none of that. So these are neutral atoms. I know that in a neutral atom, my number of protons have to equal the number of electrons because they need to cancel each other out. If I have negative, if I have positive one here, I have a negative one here, both of these cancel out to zero, a neutral atom. So if I have 24 protons, that means I have 24 positives, I have to have 24 negatives, 24 electrons. All right, and this is the part that is hard about this problem or a little bit challenging. What is the mass number of chromium X? So I'm trying to find my mass number of chromium X. I know that mass number is protons plus neutrons. I already know the number of protons. I don't know the number of neutrons. They don't tell me here if this is an X. So I'm going to go 
through the steps to find the atomic mass. All right, so I start off with a percentage. I'm gonna move this decimal two places to the left, to the left, to the left. And this is now 0 0.0484. Same with this one, to the left, to the left. And now this is 0 0.9267. Same thing with this one, to the left, to the left, and this is 0 0.0249. Okay, so I've turned my, de my percentages into decimals. Now I'm going to multiply my uh, mass number by this percent abundance. So I'm going to multiply, I'm going to do it right here at the bottom. I'm going to start at the bottom, so 0 0.0249, so this one, times 53, great, and then I'm going to have 0 0.9267 times 52, cool, 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 and then I'm going to have 0 point zero four eighty four and this is going to be um, X I don't know this one oh sorry my cat <laughs> this I don't know this one at all okay so I am going to multiply this out let me get my handy dandy calculator okay so I got point two wait no I already messed up look at that 0 0.0249 times 53 and I got 1.3197 I'm going to multiply this next one 0 0.9267 times 52 and that is 48.1884 and then this last one I can't figure it out because I don't know this one this is a blank it is worth pointing out here, up top, that 92.67% of all my chromium isotopes are chromium-52. So this is the most abundant in nature. It is the most common one. So in the uh, periodic table, that is the one that I am likely to find rounded to the atomic mass. So the atomic mass of chromium on the periodic table is 51.996. So I'm going to write that down. The atomic mass of chromium is 51.996. I need to know this information. Okay. So I know that after I've turned these uh, percentages into decimals and I've multiplied each decimal with the mass number, I need to add these numbers up to find the total atomic mass, but I don't have this number yet. I do have these two, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and add those two numbers. So I got 48.1884 plus 1.3197. One so I have 49.5081 plus something has to equal has to equal 51.996. Let me go through my steps again. I started with the percentage, moving the decimal two places to the left, to the left, to the left, to uh, get my decimal. I multiplied each decimal by the mass number right here, found that number. I can't do it for this first one because I don't have a mass number, that's what I'm trying to find. So I just left it blank. So I added the total for these two, and that's right here. And I know I have to add this one, so I'm gonna leave it as a blank. And all those three numbers have to equal 51.996. So I am going to subtract 49.5081 from both sides of my equation. 
So here's where your Algebra 2 skills come into play. So I got 49.5081, and I have to, well, no, I have to subtract 51.996 minus 49.5081, and that is 2.4879. So I know that whatever blank this was, was 2.4879. All right, now I'm going to change colors just so you can see because it's getting a little confusing with all the red. So I know that this number should have gone right here. I already found it. So let me write this equation again. 0.0484 times some number is equal to 2.4879. It's another equation I have to solve for x. I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.0484 to get my x alone, which is what you always want when you're solving equations. So x equals, and here's going to be my final answer, finally, almost 2.4879 divided by 0 0.0. 84 and that is 51.4 so that is this x that should be my mass number but if you remember mass numbers cannot have decimal places they cannot have decimal places so I am going to round this number to the nearest whole number and that is 51 so my mass number, finally, after all that math, is 51.